I have been calling these meditations scriptural meditations because they are based mostly on scripture. But out of the 366 meditations, two of them are actually not based on the scriptural passages. So uh, in Russian, they're actually called uh, duhovne razmushlenia, which is translated as spiritual meditations or spiritual reflections. So this is one of those that is not based on a scriptural passage. It is based on a passage from the prayer of Ephraim of Syria, which we read during the time of Great Lent. And that particular part of that prayer reads, grant me to see my failings. And the meditation goes as follows. Again and again, the word of God comes to us. The Lord acts in many ways. He does not leave a person in peace because in this peace of his, he becomes insensitive and the soil of his heart, dry and hard, can in the end become incompatible with receiving God's word, which will only touch the surface, as it says in the parable of the sower, and will vanish because the soil was not able to accept it. Thanks be to God for everything that he uses to till this hard soil in order to loosen it, make it soft, and create an opening for his word. Hardship, sickness, sorrows, our endless troubles, everything that shows us our powerlessness and destitution is God's plow, tilling the soil, God's visitation. He wants to plow deep furrows in this lifeless, disobedient soil in order to make it capable of accepting live seed. Deep furrows of contrition and recognition of one's sin, this is the soil which is favorable to accepting God's word. This is the meaning and fruit of fasting, which we are embarking on in remembrance of Jesus Christ's fast for our sins. There are many examples in the Old Testament when a fast was set in order to have people come to their senses, humble themselves, admit their sins, confess them, and leave them behind. It is in this sense that we also say now, grant me to see my failings. We repeat this many times on our knees, but how and for what purpose? Is it only to have our lips express the desire to see our sins, but not even to glance at them with our soul, or seeing them momentarily to clutch them even closer to our hearts and never to separate ourselves from them? To cover up our wounds as soon as possible, hide them from our and others' eyes, and leave them only covered up but stinking and rotting in our hearts? So why then see my failings in order to hide them again in our souls and live even more peacefully with our deadly ulcers? Satan assiduously hides them from us, covers them over with dirty rags under which they rot even more and eat away at our souls. God opens our wounds because he is the physician of our souls. He opens our wounds and rips off the rags in order to heal. This is what we ask for in crying out, O oh, grant me to see my failings. But our crying out must be sincere. We must not regard lightly that sin which impaled the Son of God on the cross. So grant me to see my failings, fully comprehend them, and cast them off for good. So that's the end of the meditation. And of course, the way that we use to cast these sins, cast these failings off for good, is to go to confession. Once we confess them, if the confession is sincere and the desire to cast them off is sincere, it is very helpful in finally getting rid of those failings of those sins.